thing here in Illinois, embattled House Speaker Mike Madigan may be losing his grip on the Speaker's gavel. That's right. Madigan announced today he is suspending his campaign for a 19th term in that position. WGN political reporter Taman Bradley is live outside the state capitol tonight with the very latest on that. Taman. Ray and Micah, in so many words, Mike Madigan asked his caucus, if not him, then who? If nobody gets 60 votes, he'll jump back in. Governor Pritzker is monitoring what the Democrats do, but insists he's not involved. But I'll work with whoever gets elected as speaker. Is it absolutely essential that there's a speaker elected on Wednesday? Look, we've got a lot of work that we need to get done. So what, you know, as to a, a Wednesday deadline, I'm not going to speak to that. I'm whether Mike Madigan holds on or not, he is one of the most extraordinary and polarizing figures in Illinois political history. You can't publicly accuse a legislative leader of being insane. For all but two years since 1983, Michael J. Madigan has held the Illinois Speaker's gavel. It's the longest reign of any leader of any state or federal legislative body in U.S. history. I thank the people of Chicago for their vote of confidence. Madigan, who was mentored by Richard J. Daley, has the machine in his blood. Born and raised on Chicago's southwest side, Madigan's father, also named Michael, served as a precinct captain and 13th Ward superintendent. The speaker would follow in his father's footsteps, rising to 13th Ward Committeeman. In 1970, Madigan served as a delegate to the state constitutional convention, and he was elected to the House. Both bills should be passed. Nicknamed the Velvet Hammer, Madigan rules Springfield with an iron hand. Get your amendments filed. Thank you for your consideration. He dishes out committee chairmanships and decides when, if ever, bills get voted on. Madigan famously says little to the press. Now, call the force before you go inside. Maybe later. Maybe later. We'll wait right here. As chairman of the state Democratic Party, Madigan controls various financial accounts. Loyal politicians receive campaign donations. Foals get primaried. The boss-style politics, a vestige of a bygone era. And that's why we need people with intestinal fortitude dedication. Madigan has worked with seven different governors and being a Democrat did not guarantee a good relationship. Close our 13 billion dollar deficit. Madigan clashed with Democratic chief executives Pat Quinn and Rod Blagojevich while at times worked well with Republicans Jim Edgar and George Ryan. Public service that I've provided to the people of Illinois over 40 years. Although Illinois labor unions remained loyal, the relationship was put to the test when Madigan supported public employee pension reform. But the alliance was once again solidified by the election of Republican Bruce Rauner as governor. In 2015, Rauner brought his pro-business union weakening agenda to the state house. Mr. Speaker, I respectfully disagree that any of our ideas are extreme. Rauner and Madigan waged war. Reform is essential. He chose to go in a different direction. He chose to create a budget crisis. And for two years, Illinois failed to enact a budget causing missed payments to creditors and lasting damage to social services. Madigan's power has been corrupt and corrosive for decades. The governor continues to fail to persuade. The epic standoff ended with Madigan getting his way before Rauner was defeated by J.B. Pritzker in 2018. The people of Illinois are so much better than the political machine that constantly has let us down. But during the Rauner years, the speaker came under intense scrutiny. Republicans spent millions trying to turn him into the boogeyman, launching a torrent of attack ads. Mike Madigan, the most corrupt career politician in all America. When the Me Too movement swept through Springfield, it reached Madigan's inner circle. The Democratic Party of Illinois and friends of Michael J. Madigan. Top lieutenants were accused of harassment and misconduct, and a state report outlined a culture of fear on Madigan's watch. In my case, this harassment has taken place at the highest levels in the state house. Cracks in the speaker's armor worsened last summer when ComEd entered into a deferred prosecution agreement following a federal probe of lobbying practices in Springfield. The admitted facts detail a nearly decade-long corruption scheme. The feds accused the utility giant of orchestrating a years-long bribery scheme involving contracts and payments to allies of Madigan. Calling for his resignation. The news prompted a handful of Democrats to publicly abandon the speaker. And if the speaker can't commit to that, he 
ought to resign. In November, following the defeat of the graduated income tax amendment, U.S. Senator Dick Durbin bluntly stated, Democrats paid a heavy price at the polls for Madigan's leadership. Senator Tammy Duckworth echoed Durbin's concerns. Governor Pritzker worked with Madigan to pass a capital plan, recreational cannabis, sports betting, and a minimum wage increase. We began the session by raising the minimum wage at the urging of the governor. Despite the wins, the governor seemed to grow impatient with Madigan, calling on him to answer questions about ComEd, and then ultimately asking him to hand off his chairmanship. Lock up Madigan! Lock him up! During the fall, associates of Madigan were charged with multiple counts of bribery. It became a flashpoint. A growing number of Madigan's caucus announced they would no longer support him as speaker. An astonishing development. It seemed like the beginning of the end. I'm not planning to retire. You have no plans at all. You're going to be there forever. <laughs> <laughs> and here is a look at the contenders for speaker. The situation is fluid. Kelly Cassidy entered the race today, joining Ann Williams and Stephanie Kifowit. Speculation continues about Emmanuel Chris Welch, Jay Hoffman, and Jahan Gordon Booth. And of course, Michael J. Madigan may once again emerge as a candidate, perhaps the leading candidate. We'll keep our eye on it. That's the latest tonight from Springfield. Tamon Bradley, WGN News. Thank you, Tamon. Wow. Still ahead, the fallout continues from the Capitol attack. The company is taking a step back from political donations, and Facebook is removing a certain phrase from its platform. That's after 9.50. Also ahead for you.